Today we are here in Estonia Embassy with Honorable Ambassador Kaya Teil. Uh, thank you that we can spend time with you. Uh, my first question is, uh, you graduated from Tartu University yeah. with a degree uh, in Estonia and Philology. Uh, what influenced uh, you to decide to study in this area? And upon having graduated, what was it that influenced your decision to enter into the field of politician uh, affairs? Well, first of all, um, you need to bear in mind that diplomacy is really not policy area. Uh, diplomacy is as any other profession. So um, I am a professional diplomat. I have nothing to do with the politics in Estonia. Uh, but the question, of course, is, um, is interesting but complicated because uh, I was not born in free Estonia. I was born in Estonia, which was occupied by the Soviet Union. So the, the choices uh, of professions were not perhaps what, uh, what people in a free world would, uh, would dream of. And uh, diplomacy as a career was absolutely uh, unspeakable for, for, for Estonians. So, um, well, to be frank, uh, to study your mother language was some sort of a, of a respite from, uh, from this Soviet everyday awful environment. And, uh, and I really liked my studies, but it had absolutely nothing to do with my further career in diplomacy, so I usually joke that I studied something completely useless. <laughs> now, maybe not useless. You can use in different way all of your knowledge. Well, sure this is true. I'm sure this is true, but to study a small language and then become a professional diplomat, well, you really don't use <laughs> the language in your everyday yes. work, yes. My second um, question is, during your politician or um, diplomatic career, you have been appointed as the ambassador in Great Britain and Nordic Ireland, and you are currently under secretary uh, to Foreign Ministry for European uh, Union Affairs. And as ambassador, do you think you are more in contact with people? And in which position do you feel you gain the most satisfaction from? Uh, well, uh, it's true that uh, it's, uh, the, the job profile is quite different when you work in, in, um, in the capital uh, and when you work as a bilateral ambassador somewhere. And uh, the work in the capital is probably a little bit more administrative. Uh, but it also maybe carries more responsibility. So, uh, so uh, I really liked it. It's a it's a big challenge, and uh, you get the chance to shape the the uh, the diplomacy of your country and uh, the, the, to be totally engaged with forming the foreign policy of your country. Uh, as a bilateral diplomat uh, residing somewhere, uh, you are much more involved with uh, with uh, very different kind of concrete hands-on projects in uh, in this particular country. Um, my ne next question is more uh, more about relationship. The first Estonian ambassador in Ger uh, Germany was the Honorable Tit. Masulevich in uh, 1991, after Estonia won independence. In your opinion, since that time, how has uh, that relationship between Germany and Estonia did change? The first ambassador after regaining the independence in 1991. So we are present here in Germany since 1920. This is our historic house, mm -hmm. uh, this particular building. Uh, so. Uh, the Republic of Estonia was born in 1918. So in this sense, uh, our good friend Tit Motsulevich was not the first, uh, first ambassador in Germany. But as for uh, our relations between Estonia and Germany, well, uh, the, 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 the really watershed movement was, uh, was uh, uh, our entering into the European Union and NATO in 2004. 
So I suppose all our activities before this, uh, this historic date were really focused on, on gaining the possibility of, uh, of joining the EU and NATO. Now, after the joining, uh, the relations are totally different and we're just, you know, the very best partners in the European Union and NATO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically my next question is um, is about that, that Estonia is member of the EU and NATO and also Eurozone and support Eastern Partnership. In what ways do you think diplomatic relations uh, with other countries such as Germany and Estonia do uh, is achieving your domestic goals and strategy? Mm, so the interplay between our foreign policy and domestic policy. Well, the very well-known truth, uh, the truism actually, is that the foreign policy needs to be continuation of the domestic policies. Now, uh, for a very small country in very crucial historic times, it sometimes is the, the other way around. So I'm sure that when Estonia was seeking the membership, our m- utmost concern was the security of Estonia. So uh, there has been a very broad consensus in Estonia through party lines for all those years that um, uh, security is our utmost concern. Uh, So I believe that uh, even now, and perhaps especially now since 2014, since Russia has violated all those international agreements, we are uh, once again very focused on our our main concern on our stability in in foreign policy and security policy so whatever we do in nato in the european union has an implication in um, in in estonia in this way that that people do understand that uh, we cannot be left alone in the world and so we need to cooperate with our partners in the best possible way so that we can establish ourselves as a trustful partner for our allies. And that, of course, has major implications for domestic policies. Uh, The concern right now everywhere in the world is the refugee crisis. Mm -hmm. Should we uh, should we should we be prepared and able to uh, to play a role here? Should we play a part in, in uh, burden sharing in Europe. That's a very complicated question also in Estonia, but the government has decided yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a little bit like against mainstream also in Estonia, but we do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, very nice. Then um, maybe a little bit more question about the cultural diplomacy and culture. Uh, Estonia has a good relationship with, uh, with Germany and since 2003 uh, cultural attaché has worked in Estonia embassy. Um, and uh, I also saw many high school are offering the Unicre program in which Estonian students have possibility to gain Estonian and Germany um, high school diplomas. And how important do you think is that younger generation learn other languages and can be educated in culture results at school? And do you think programs uh, such as this is can contribute to deeper relationship between Germany and Estonia? Well, as for the foreign languages, uh, the skills for foreign languages, uh, the need for this is self-evident in a small country. I mean, we don't argue about it. We don't don't discuss it. We we just do it. We just learn languages. In our high schools, uh, there are mostly uh, three obligatory foreign languages which you need to learn. And uh, and the program you refer to, the, the the possibility for Estonians to to uh, to uh, graduate with this German certificate of, of the, the German Abitur certificate, uh, this of course is rather exceptional. Now, this is only provided, I think, in a couple of schools in Estonia. But obviously, it's uh, very, very favorable for the young people who then, uh, of course, equal on the German uh, job market if they so wish, or uh, most importantly, in in the German universities. And maybe my last question then 
in what way is Estonia Embassy uh, in Germany promoting Estonian culture here? And what what do you plan, like what events are you planning for future here? Yes, that's uh, also a question which which needs a rather complicated and thorough answer. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, we do have a cultural attaché, a diplomat sent from from Tallinn, and uh, he makes his own plans. Uh, it's it differs from year to year uh, where the focus lays. For example, last year we celebrated uh, the 80th birthday of one of the world-renowned Estonian composers, Arvo Pärt, and that's why uh, 2015 was the year of music in, in Estonia. So uh, also here in Germany we had some absolutely wonderful big concerts uh, in co concert house in Berlin, for example, and so on and so on. Uh, now, this year is dedicated uh, a year for a maritime culture. Uh, so uh, there is an interesting opportunity to com combine, uh, let's say, business diplomacy with cultural diplomacy. And uh, of course, all sorts of business events would be, would be much livelier with some cultural performances and, and contributions. Here in this house, you see, we always display contempor contemporary Estonian art. Mm -hmm. So the exhibitions vary uh, from uh, classical paintings. At the moment, we see a photo exhibition, more the social project, really. It's about um, Estonian Roma people. Mm -hmm. We have had jewelry exhibitions. The latest exhibition was the Estonian comics. So uh, it is really a very wide range of Estonian contemporary art, and this is certainly going to continue. Then there are some festivals in Germany where we have already traditional connections. Uh, sometimes we we do a one-off project last year uh, and still continuing this year the flagship project was exhibition of the of a very famous uh, book uh, illustrator Elon Wiegland who has illustrated all the books of Astrid Lindgren who is of course also very well known in Germany so this exhibition uh, was on display in Berlin for a long time it has moved to Munich at the moment and will come back to Greifswald University in the spring. So these are just a few examples. Mm, maybe my last question. Um, what do you think, why is uh, cultural diplomacy and cultural aspect very important in current situation, maybe in refugees crisis, but in general in our world we are really focusing on different culture. Um, what do you think, why it's like that? Uh, I don't think that culture uh, gains a, a specific uh, status at specific times. I think it's uh, important always, and uh, it's just part of human life. So, uh, so uh, I don't think that we should focus more or less on culture during euro crisis or refugee crisis or whatever the next crisis might be but uh, but i think that um, people to people contacts are usually best established through through culture and uh, and this is what the world is about people to people contacts then thank you for uh, your answers and maybe we can meet each other next time. Thank, Thank you. you.